So, in this talk, in this talk, I'd like to share the the secret the secret to inner peace. Basically the stuff that works, the stuff that actually works. <laughs> If we do it, <laughs> I don't care what secrets you have in what field, if you don't do anything, nothing happens. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you the secret to inner peace. Half an hour is not very long. It's not very long. So I'm just going to show you the, the essence, the essence what you really need to know. First thing you need to know is this inner peace thing is not an easy thing to achieve. That's the step one, first thing you need to know. It's like if you play tennis, you need to know that to win Australian Open is not an easy thing. That's a step one. So if you want to win that, then you've got to gather all your energy and put a lot of oomph and spirit into it, isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? You're not going to be poking around. <laughs> I don't mean like seriousness and stuff like that. I mean your heart is in it. Understand? <laughs> seriousness is no good. But you get burned out. What I mean is the love of it. Your heart is in it. That's step one. <laughs> Because if, if that is not there, forget about doing good, being good at this. Forget about it. How can you be good at anything if your heart is not in it? <laughs> See? That's step one. Next thing to know, even though it's very, very difficult, it is... At the same time, very, very easy. You need to know that. <laughs> That's why the masters so often share repeatedly to attain perfect inner peace, it is the hardest thing for you to achieve in your life and is the easiest thing at the same time. <laughs> How can something be the hardest thing and the easiest thing? <laughs> If your heart is not in it, if you're not sincere at this, it is impossible to achieve. But when your heart is in it and you're sincere towards it, it is the easiest thing. You understand now? Next thing to know is that it's not something that you look for outside you. It's not something you look for. Like, if you need veggies, you've got to go to Woolworths or Coles or, or Audi or the local fruit store. You have to go somewhere. But this inner peace thing, you don't have to go somewhere. Is actually in you. You have to look for you because that's your natural state. Your natural state. It's like the, the natural state of the sun is to shine. 
The natural state of a river is to flow. You know. See? It's your natural state. So you're not looking for somebody to give you that peace in that sense, in that sense. You're not looking for something outside. You're looking inside you. That's the starting point to understand. That's why when we are born, we are very peaceful. <laughs> when we're born, we are bright, joyful, happy, loving and peaceful. Because a child, is, a baby is very natural. If the baby sees the Prime Minister of Australia, the baby doesn't put on an act. Or, or if the baby sees um, some current movie star, so I don't watch movies much, so I don't know who's a current movie star. <laughs> I can't even say one example. <laughs> if a baby sees a, your favourite movie star, it doesn't get starstruck anything, does it? No. In other words, it doesn't put on an act, does it? It is just itself, natural. Glowing, peaceful, light, joyful, and giggling and happy. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> See? So, this state, this inner peace state, is our natural state. We're not trying to achieve something outside to successfully, successfully achieve that so that we can have inner peace so that we can become happy. <laughs> That's what we definitely need to know is the next step. Next. Next. We want to know what is the thing that makes us lose our peace. Isn't it? Once we know what that peace is a natural state, we want to know how do we what makes us lose that? You see? See, we think that the things that makes us lose our peace, our inner peace and our happiness is things like relationship problems, when someone screams at you, financial difficulty, physical illness, loss of a loved one, loneliness, essentially those things, right? But it's not really those things. There's something that happens when those things happen, you see. When somebody screams at you, there's something that happens before you lose your inner peace. And that's your thoughts. You actually think some thoughts before you lose the peace. <laughs> You will think, I can't believe that she screamed at me. I just can't believe that. Who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? He's not my father. <laughs> See, of course, there's all sorts of other thoughts. If he says it one more time, I'll deck him. <laughs> well, all these type of thoughts that come, it, 
it basically creates emotions. Look at your own life. We have these thoughts. Emotions come immediately, isn't it? So that's what emotions follow thoughts like a shadow. When these emotions come and the thoughts continues, continues. And when it has like a minute to run out of thoughts, it, you, you, press, you basically press replay and then it goes again. And then when it finishes, you press replay and it goes again. So your emotion keeps on following, keeps on going, keeps on going, because your thoughts keep on going, keeps on going. So now, when the thoughts don't stop, the emotions don't stop. And when you have emotions, what you call negative emotions, for a few minutes, even half an hour, an hour, that's not too bad. Nothing wrong with that. But when you have thoughts of sadness, thoughts that cause your emotions of sadness for a week without stopping, a tiny bit of stop and it goes again. A month, a year, that's a problem. That's what you call suffering. So, you've got to stop thoughts. You've got to stop thoughts. You've got to learn how to stop thoughts. Thoughts are not easy to stop. Why? Because it's, it's invisible. You can't see it easily. It's invisible. You see? So that's why it's very hard to stop the thoughts. See, that's why that's why you really need to know the way to stop thoughts. And I want to share you very briefly, because I've only got half an hour in total. So I'm going to share very briefly how to stop thoughts. You stop thoughts by focusing. Focusing. What you call one-pointedness focus. One-pointedness focus. Think about this. When an eagle is flying in the sky and you go... Wow, look at that. Oh, that looks beautiful. Oh, wow. For those five, ten seconds, you look in the eagle, you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about the parking fine. You're not thinking about... You're not happy with your job. You're not thinking anything the same in that moment. Correct? Because in that moment, you're focused. You see? That's why it feels so good. You go, oh, that, that's amazing. <laughs> that's because you're focused. When you're focused, your mind stops. Your mind stops. So when your mind stops, by the way, when your mind stops, you don't die. <laughs> You don't die. When your thoughts stop, you don't die. No. It just simply means your emotion stops churning. And then you, in that moment, you have that feeling of space and peace. Like spaciousness and peace. Which I'm going to transmit that. Um, to you at the end of the Q&A so you understand what I'm saying from experience, not just the words. So, meditation, 
what they call meditation is really one-pointedness focus. Next, you want to know how to meditate properly. You want to know what you're doing. If you want to do it, if you want to get results, it's like university. You want to graduate university, you better know how to study properly. If you're just poking around, you're going to fail. You know? Same thing. You want to meditate, you want to meditate properly. Quality, quality. Five minutes quality meditation is better than five hours of garbage meditation. You see? Anyway, so that's the meditation is one method to attain the inner peace. Because when you focus, when you, while you're focusing, you can't think at the same time. In that moment you're focusing, you can't think at the same time. You have to stop focus or stop meditating and then the thinking comes. So your focus ability is like the switch on the wall knowing where the light is. When you want the light on or off, it's in your control. Happiness will be in your control when you're able to focus at will as long as you like and when you like. So in that sense, focus, one-pointedness focus or meditation is one method, one method to attain, have inner peace. Now, I'm going fast. I'm not marking around because half an hour goes very quickly. <laughs> now, next, another method Another method is to feel that love in your heart. To feel that love in your heart. You know, look, I can feel love in my heart. I, I, can, I can go to my heart space and feel that. It feels sweet and beautiful. And I just enjoy that. Anytime I like. Anytime I like. Well, you're no different to me. We're all one. The highest truth and the highest teachings is we're all one, we're all the same. So go to your heart and feel that love in your heart. Anyway, that's not easy. <laughs> that's not easy. So, because that's, if you're able to do that, that's great. Do that. But if you're not able to do that um, easily, then what you do is you cause another person to feel love in their heart. Because we're one, when they feel love in their heart, we will automatically feel that in ours. You know? Like two water tanks. We've got two water tanks where I live. Now they're connected. So when one water tank is filled, other water tanks also filled. You understand? <laughs> so when their heart, when they feel love in their heart, you will feel love in your heart. So what you're trying to do is, in short, be kind and selfless to everyone you meet that when the opportunity arise. That is much better than going around telling everybody, I love you, I love you. Because you say it in the wrong place in the pub, you might get a black eye. <laughs> you know, don't go around saying I love you to everybody. <laughs> be kind, be kind and selfless. Be kind. Don't think, don't think, oh, you know, don't think for yourself. It's ironic. The more you think for yourself, put yourself first, you think, well, that, you know, like, I've got, I've got to look after myself first. You know, 
I've got to look after myself first. You know, I've got to love myself. You know, I've got to look after myself first, and then, you know, I can then I can love others. Well, that's the that's the formula of disaster, emotional disaster. <laughs> you know, the formula for enlightenment, of perfect peace and happiness, is. Look after others and forget about yourself. It's ironic because you think if you forget about yourself, your life's going to go down. But no, no, no. No, no, no. Anyone who's ever like, put others first and not worry about themselves fully, 100%, they all became saints. Their life didn't go down. No, no. They became amazing, beautiful human beings. You know? So that's the second, second approach. Now these, these approaches are not exclusive, exclusive to each other. You can do both at the same time. Not just one or the other. You know? Now, another method, another method is the law, the law of energy, the law of energy. The law of energy is this, higher energy eats up lower energy, or to speak more gently, <laughs> It transforms low energy. It's up. It's a bit scary. <laughs> higher energy, higher vibration energy, tr transforms lower vibration and energy, and it, it brings it to higher energy. For example, cancer. From what I've been told, cancer is the cancer cell. It goes around and it, and it makes the other cells become cancerous cells. Because cancer cell is low vibration energy, so it goes around and it takes other energy and turns it into low vibration energy. So similarly, but it's opposite, higher frequency energy will transform lower frequency energy. So what, that, what, what does that mean? What that means is when you hang around and you're con connected, connected, in heart, you know, you're kind of connected, not closed off, you're kind of connected with Another who has higher frequency energy, then their high, high frequency energy will pull your energy up. Like that. It depends who's stronger. If the lower frequency energy is very powerful, if someone's really negative and they're really strong, negative, and the other person is kind of higher frequency, but you're kind of like a little bit new at it. <laughs> well, this lower energy, that strong, is going to pull the other person down. Because they're like experience of pulling others down. Yeah. And this other person up here, high frequency energy, is not that experience of pulling others up. So it's like, it's not that much higher, a little bit higher. But when the energy is extremely high, then that will pull the negative energy. They'll pull the negative energy up to its level, towards its level. That the third way is 
really, in short, the way of basically connecting with masters, spiritual masters. In our, in our society, that kind of sounds a bit scary, but there's nothing scary about it. It's just the law of energy. <laughs> it's just the law of energy. <laughs> now, if we don't use the third method, that's okay. Use the first two. <laughs> Actually, just the first one will work. <laughs> If you're able to meditate really well, quality. Not, not like half an hour meditating like this, you know, and thinking, oh, you know, like the specials, <laughs> you know, the half yearly specials coming soon. I need a new pair of Levi's <laughs> with my Aaron William boots. <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not meditating, that's shopping. <laughs> yeah. If you can meditate properly, then you just do that method. If you're like me, oh I'm I want to make sure I cover, my, cover myself, cover my grounds, so I do meditation and selflessness. So I did that. And to cover myself, then I also hang around with the spiritual master. Like connect with the spiritual master. L let me be short and blunt. Short and blunt. Not around the bush, because I haven't got time. You know? <laughs> Half an hour, I'm going to be out of time. <laughs> to connect with another person is not by talking to another person. If talking to another person you connect, then in the workplace, you know, you could work with someone next to you for five years. Doesn't mean you're kind of close in heart. Doesn't mean that. You're talking all day. You see? It's not talking, it is love. When you love another person in your heart, immediately you feel connected. When two people love each other in heart, I'm not talking about lovers. Lovers may be connected in heart and may not. Most of the time it's not. <laughs> <laughs> laugh, you're laughing, you speak from experience. <laughs> Just joking, just joking. But it's true. What I'm saying is connect to love in heart, you know, in heart. That's how you connect with someone, love. There's no secret. Simple to love. See? See, you generally speaking feel, I can feel your energy. I can, I can pick up your energy generally speaking. You kind of feel comfortable with me. You kind of feel comfortable. <laughs> Maybe some people are not full on, but kind of feel comfortable. Why? I don't know you. I just, I just, I'm just, I just met you <laughs> now, most of you. But why do you feel comfortable? I'll tell you why, because I love you. <laughs> and in your being, in your being, it feels my love. Not because I said I love you. I didn't come out first and said I love you. <laughs> See that? When you love others, love others, then you connect with them. So, in short, in short, the three ways for inner peace. Three ways. Quality meditation. Quality meditation, what you call one-pointedness focus. Two, 
be selfless, be kind. Don't worry about yourself. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let life take care of yourself. Don't worry. <laughs> like, however long you've lived so far, the worrying did not get you to this far. You know? <laughs> it didn't. It's not the worrying that got you this far. <laughs> you know? It's life itself got you this far. It's just along the way you worry. It, it makes the journey harder to where you're at. You don't worry about yourself. You just kind of let it go. Let life take care of it. Because it has brought you where you are. <laughs> Minus the worries. Yeah. Then you know, you'll be happy. So selflessness, let go of worrying about yourself, taking care of yourself. You will not, you will not just go down like a bag of potatoes, I'm telling you. <laughs> when you love others and care for others, don't worry about yourself. You will not burn out, I'm telling you. You will not burn out. You'll be glowing in love because love will awaken in you. you know? There'll be love in your heart. There'll be love in your voice. There'll be love in your eyes. Just look at your eyes in the mirror, it's beautiful because it's love. <laughs> Your energy is beautiful because there's love. You know? So that's the meditation, selflessness, you know, to awaken love in you. And the third way is to connect and love those that has, has peaked the sport of high vibrations. <laughs> they peaked that sport of high vibrations. <laughs> love them. Love them. If you don't know how to love uh, them, just bluff it. <laughs> just bluff it. And then slowly, 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 you bluff long enough, it becomes real. <laughs> you know? Of course you know how to love. Because you are love. So, so when someone is full of love, you, you are love that naturally loves that love. You know? But the sun knows a lot about light. <laughs> you are love, so you know love. If you, you think you don't know, you're mistaken, so what you do, you just bluff it to start off with. <laughs> anyway, I can feel my half an hour's up. <laughs> so, even though I didn't go into the detail, the detail, because it's only half an hour talk, it's a detail of, of how to meditate, how to detail the ways, the strategies, the ways to kind of step up and be selfless, you know, the courage and the, the you know, the, the details, the inspiration the, and the, you know, and the, the third way, the third way, you, you don't have to, you just Google it. <laughs> the third way, you know. <laughs> yeah. Google, how do I connect with high vibrational masters? 
I made that up. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but those three ways, those three ways is going to work. I'm telling you, it's going to work. Don't wait. Don't wait until the university do all the research, the PhD, the, all the research that tells you meditation is found to be really beneficial for you. Don't wait. <laughs> Why wait for the research? You can do it straight away and feel it works or not. What evidence do you need? You, your own experience is the evidence. <laughs> you know? When I started meditating at university, when I was at university, you know, kind of stressful, so something's, meditation's good for me. I didn't wait until the, the, all the research papers came out and said meditation is really good for your health. But no, no, no. <laughs> Straight away, do it. Yeah. I learnt meditation at university. I first learnt immediately one hour in the morning, one hour at night before bed, one hour in the morning when I wake up. Two hours of meditation a day. Straight away. Why not? I sit down, I meditate. It feels beautiful. I don't want to get up. It feels beautiful. I feel, oh, it feels peaceful. Oh, compared to all those stupid exams. <laughs> Why? You know? Anyway, you get you get my my message. The secret. They're the secret to inner peace. It really is. Your misery will just evaporate out of you, evaporate out of you. you know? 